Hey everybody, my name is Jan Dufour and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I live just outside of Louisville, Kentucky. Today we're going to make this beautiful card um, with a new suite. The suite is actually called Perennial Lavender Suite. Um, this There's two stamp sets with it. Of course you can purchase all of this separately. When you buy a suite it kind of all brings it together. Perennial Postage, which has got awesome sayings. They're all occasion and they have these awesome postage dies so you can layer sizes, which I love. And then of course we have painted lavender with um, the dies for that as well. These are photopolymer and these are the dies. Of course there's always more dies than there are stamps. But today we're going to be using this and this stamp, and then we're going to be using the phrase, what are we doing? You are loved beyond measure. So those two. Uh, part of the suite is the paper, which we're going to use this sheet of paper. Ooh, it's too big for the camera. Um, we're going to use this. I'm going to show you how to cut it out so you can make three cards like this and then three more cards from the bottom piece. So six cards out of one sheet of paper. I'll just quickly flip through, if I'm not making you dizzy here, uh, all of these beautiful papers. And of course, the back sides are always gorgeous as well. Just really, really, really pretty. Um, I think later at the end of the year, I'll be showing you how to make uh, blank cards and I'm gonna use this set. So to make this, oh, business, just quickly, if you're on YouTube and you want the project sheet that I create with all of the measurements and pictures and that kind of thing, go to my blog at stampmesilly.com. If you have any questions or if you don't have a demonstrator and would like a free catalog, just email me at jandufour at yahoo.com. And if you want to purchase any of these items, you can go to my online store at jandufour.stampinup.net. All right, so to make this card, I'm gonna show you how to cut the paper first. I purposely didn't prep this section of it because I wanted to show you. I kind of liked the idea of some of the um, neutral tones on the top. This is beautiful. There's a lot of color there. So what I decided to do was to make um, three cards. So I needed it to be um, three and three quarters by five. So I'm going to cut the five here this way because it's going to be the length. I'll put this aside and show you what I do with it later. And then three and three quarters. And that will give you three quick cards. Three and three quarters. And then you'll have a sliver, and I'll show you what to do with that sliver, because we don't like to throw good paper away. Of course, you don't have to do that, but I'm gonna keep this little piece. That's the back side, that's the front side. So I'm gonna put two of these away, because we don't need them right now. I'm gonna put this away. I wanna show you um, some of the combinations. Today, we're using Lost Lagoon for our card base. And then we're gonna use uh, basic white for a border. And then we're gonna place the designer series paper here. Um, of course, when you have darker cardstock, this you could get away with maybe, um, but I always prefer to put a, a piece of basic white on the inside. So the, the uh, card base is uh, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Um, as I said, the this sheet here is three and three quarters by five, and the first layer is four by five and a quarter. Again, all of those measurements will be on my blog in the project sheet. So the inside is the same as the first layer. All right, so let's put these aside for right now because we don't need them. Um, I guess I will start with some gluing to get that going. I just love this set, and I'm... I always used to say I'm not a flower person. I just never got into loving flowers when I was young. 
I think mostly because my aunts used to make me weed their garden. <laughs> and I didn't like most of the stuff that was growing in it. Um, except their gooseberries. I don't know if you've ever heard of those, but up north in northern Maine, we had those. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this on as well. Look at the nice neutral color on the background. Just, you could make a guy card out of that easily. Um, so even though it's lots of flowers in this set, there are lots of things you can do if you're trying to find masculine cards. That seems to be what most of us struggle with most of the time. All right, so here we go. There's that card set. I'm gonna just push it aside for right now. Um, well, why don't I go ahead? Let's do the glue stuff. We'll do the gluing on the inside. And yes, I still have my wrist in a cast. Uh, it's not a cast, it's a splint, but um, I saw the doctor yesterday and I have to work for another week. And then I can take it off unless I am doing lifting or something that's strenuous and I should put it back on. But basically I will be almost free next week. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna let that set aside and dry. We're going to go ahead and do our sentiment. So the pieces that I've cut are three and a half by three quarters. And this is uh, three and three quarters by a hair under one. And the reason we do a hair under one, we're gonna be using the Punch Lovely Labels Pick a Bunch. And you can have either this ending to it or this ending. I'm, I'm using this one here. I always turn them over when I do them. Um, and if you, it, it does a half inch, three quarters and an inch, but you, really you can just ignore that. You can make it anything you want under an inch. The reason I like it to be a hair um, smaller than the, that wrist really has no strength in it whatsoever. Um, the reason I like it to be a little hair under is if it's exactly an inch when you're trying to put this in here, it, it makes it a little harder. But you look at it upside down, make sure it's centered. You put the end of the paper all the way to the end. That looks pretty good. I'll help myself out a little bit here. All right, and we'll pull that out. So that's all ready to go. Then we're gonna stamp, and I took the set out. The colors I'm using are Lost Lagoon, um, Gorgeous Grape, and Highland Heather. Um, on this one, I used the Highland Heather. A lot of times I will go with whatever color my um, border color is or the base, uh, but I decided that I wanted to bring in some of this color. So just because I did, I have to show it to you that way. Uh, I think it's this one. Um, this barely fits on there. So if that makes you nervous, you can stamp it first and then cut it down after. Um, that always works too. And without putting my head in the way, I'm gonna try to do this. And I'm trying to center it even on the sides because we like to do that again. <laughs> I'm gonna use the darker color. Um, and it was not quite centered. So let's try again. That's why pieces of paper have two sides. Let's try. Oh yeah, that'll be better. And then again, I'm trying to center it left to right as well because I'm gonna be cutting off those little pieces. The love is off there, but you know what? I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. All right, this is handmade. That's, let's get rid of this before I do something seriously dangerous. I've been, you know, kind of clumsy lately. I don't know if you've noticed. I like this one. So we're gonna put that in there and center that. Turn it around, make that centered. Whoops, I just uncentered it. Can't do it yet. I'm getting there. I got it halfway closed. <laughs> All right, so that's finished. Now that should fit right on top of that. There you go. And if that really bothers you because it went off, you can make this a hair 
more than three quarters um, so that you still have a border. But again, I'm okay with it. Um, I'm going to, whoops, go ahead and glue this, which is the darker one. This is the darker one. I was using Gorgeous or Highland Heather and I ended up switching to Gorgeous Grape because it's a little bit darker. There we go. Let that sit aside. And we're gonna do a little bit more stamping. We're gonna do some a lavender, which is gonna be purple in case you're wondering. <laughs> and this is basically the lavender bush. Uh, we actually have a lavender farm right down the road from here. And I'm trying to decide, yeah, it was this. Um, and they grow and they're, they're like little round bushes smaller smaller than I thought they would be. I don't know if that's because that's near their store or if that's because I don't I don't know that if that's always the way. Well I'm not picking up ink right there. Okay there we go. And I didn't leave myself much room but that's okay. Um, when you stamp with photopolymer stamps you're supposed to use your stamp and pierce mat which I cut in half. I use it for something different um, because it does uh, I'll show you when we do this so that was done in gorgeous grape and then we're gonna lose use a lost lagoon for the bottom um, normally it doesn't matter to me I guess because I have a pretty even pressure um, on this one I think normally if a, if a stamp is very detailed it's going to be in red rubber because they can etch more detail. Um, and I think that's why when they make the photopolymer, they want a little more give to it. So it can uh, see it even made a mark around, but it doesn't matter because we're going to be cutting it off. But um, because maybe it absorbs the ink all the way around. But this is very kind of very detailed so I almost think it is better particularly for this stamp if you do use it I want to show you that you don't have to use it if you don't have it you know if you have a mouse pad that'll work too all right and so we're going to be uh, magicians and I'm going to just show you what happens after you die cut them you get this woohoo it's a miracle all right so as you can see on this card I wanted it on the top and on the bottom. I had some green. I put some more green. Another one of the stamps had some leaves. I don't think it's really necessary. There's lots of color in there. So all I did was put a dab of glue right here, right there, and overlap them a little bit um, so that when we put the uh, sentiment, we can figure out where, how high, how far over, where exactly do we want it. And I say we want it exactly there, because I like that. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just put some glue. It was too fast with a cap there. Um, put some glue on it. I popped up the other one and then popped up the sentiment too. And that's okay if you're hand delivering, but if you're going to put it in the mail, it's probably not the best. Um, so I'm going to lay this one flat and then I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of this one. I'm gonna put four because I know that it's going over this and I wanna help hold that down. You take these off. You know, there's always blessings around the corner that you don't know about. Can you imagine if I had broken my right wrist and I'm right-handed? Now I know that happens to people all the time, but that would have been a real bummer. Cause I make most of my gifts for Christmas and it has already slowed my knitting down, <laughs> but that's okay. All right, it worked out for me. Now, um, this one's a little bit better centered. I had purposely pushed that one over so that I could put the 
the um, gem there, but I, I don't know that I love that there. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna use, this is also part of the suite, the Purple Fine Shimmer Gems. They have all kinds of the three, this is, uh, I would guess, Blackberry Bliss. This would be Gorgeous Grape and this would be Highland, Highland Heather. And you either put one or three or, or five, you always want an odd number. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking right here. You put them wherever you feel happy. And I think one is enough. We have a lot of layering and I think that's, that, uh, that covers it. All right, put that aside. Now, this was on a colored cardstock base. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple that I did on white bases. And I also made this border, let me point, this border smaller because this is a, a thinner and then this this one wider because i wanted more color to show up i used a ribbon this is actually lost lagoon ribbon not part of the suite but it is um something that we offer it's in our annual catalog it's really pretty it, it ties very easily also and then i had to put some butterflies in the garden because don't we always have butterflies in the garden and then this one I'm not happy with the, the loosey-goosey things. I will probably iron that <laughs> or bend it or something. I don't like it sticking up. <laughs> I want it right there. Okay. Um, and I use a different uh, phrase. So the reason I use different sayings on each one of them is because I want you to put in the comments which one you like better. Um, you can do it by the sentiment because they're all different. Um, as I said, this side, I put um, a white part inside. This one's plain, although I had some leftover um, things. It's very quick and just stuck those in there. And then this one, you, you know that leftover strip that we cut off? I cut it in half and then put it there just for decorations. How fun. So you tell me which one do you like the best? And then later on, at the end of next month, um, I will do one using the rest of the pieces from that top part um, and make a whole bunch of blank cards to show you the different ways you can use that, that paper. I hope you enjoyed this. I, I'm a little goofy today, I know. I'm excited that the brace is coming off. Um, but if you have any questions, don't forget you can email me at jandufor at yahoo.com. If you're on YouTube and you want the project sheet with the measurements, go to stampmesilly.com. And if you want to shop, you go to my store online, jandufor at stampinup.net. Thanks so much for stopping by. Bye.